Hey there, I want to take a look at this model that we built. It's behind me. It's missing three hips. They're, they're hexagonal hips. And uh, you can see this one here is just a standard hip in the back. And it has a dog leg of 22 and a half degree angle. And then you get out here and you get a hexagonal hips. And uh, in the immortal words of Oscar Wilde, you know more than you think you know, just as you know less than you want to know. And how that applies to roof framing is that there's plenty of things that you know about roof framing, and there are plenty that you don't. But if you expound on the things that you do know, you can discover ways of doing the things that you don't. And that's what it is to be a journeyman. So here's a standard hip in the back. Most of us know that if this was a 12 by 12 square here, these two jacks and the two plate lines here, the diagonal would be the hypotenuse. Most of us know that the hypotenuse for a 12 inch square is 17 inches. So when you wanted to cut plumb and level cut on your rafter, you'd set up your square to 17 on the level for a standard, whatever the rise is on the tongue. In this case, it's a 912, so you set up nine inches on the tongue and 17 inches on the body, and you either just use it to mark out the plumb and level, or you actually step off the square. <coughs> In this case, it would be one full step if we wanted to get to the location where the two jacks met right here. Right here, it looks like if these were 12 inches on center, these, these rafters here, these common rafters, then it would be three full steps till we got to the end of this hip here, and all we'd have to do here would be to consider the setbacks and deductions up top and the heel stand down low. And you can learn how to do that online from 12 or 20 different uh, YouTube videos. I haven't looked, I'm sure they're there, and that's awesome. Well, knowing that then, obviously then, in that case, every single hip and valley has its own hypotenuse. In this case, it's a square because it's a 90 degree corner, but in the case of a 22 and a half degree angle dog leg here, which happens to be an octagon hip and valley in that it runs at 22 and a half degree angle, or this hip, these three hips here, which run at 30 degree angles, which are hexagonal, uh, it would not be a square, it'd be a rectangle. <coughs> and our job would try to to be to try to figure out how to create that rectangle, right? We know that the run over here, the run of the common rafter is 12 inches, and the, the run on the plate line is also 12 inches. But out here, if you're looking at this dog leg here, you'll see these jacks are the same length, right? The run is 12 inches, but the, but the plate line run is less. So what, and then the hypotenuse goes in between. So the two legs of a right triangle and the hypotenuse is in between. We need to figure out what it is, what the, what the plate line run is for every 12 inches. Why 12 inches? And the answer is because you set up the square for a common rafter at 12 inches on the level and whatever the unit rise is. When I use the word unit rise and unit run, I'm talking about what we call the pitch of the roof. So when I say uh, it's a 9-12 pitch, I mean <coughs> a unit 9, unit 12. Unit means a part of, and that's how you step off the, the rafter, the common rafter. What we want to know, though, is how, where to set the steel square for the length of hypotenuse so we can step off the hip, say, for one full step which would then meet where the common rafter meets with the same rise and two full steps, be twice the common rafter run with a twice the rise and so on and so forth. That's what we're looking for. So if you went inside, now let's, let's go to the 30 degree angle. One. If you were walking around inside this house, this was a massive house, <coughs> this our, these walls would already be frame, or if nothing else, the subfloor would be there.
concrete guys had to figure out these angles. We didn't as framers. So how to figure those angles out for the concrete is their job. We know how to do it because framers are smarter than concrete contractors. <laughs> but anyway, we would just go in here. We'd, we'd measure off the wall here and here, snap a line. In this case, let's say 12 inches until it, run, it ran into the opposite wall. And then go into this section of the room and pull 12 inches in two spots and snap another line. And where they converge, you'd, you'd snap a line on through them. And that would be the hypotenuse of that little triangle there. And I've done that right here. Here it is, 12 inches off the wall. I set a piece of plywood, say, down on the subfloor. Use the subfloor itself. Snap the line. This would be the wall. This wall here. Snap the line. <coughs> that would give me this point here, which is 12 inches away. And then connected the dots from the corner, from the two converging lines that are 12 inches from the wall. Connected the dots to the corner. And that will give you the angle and plan view. Now also, since this is a hexagon, and the law of polygons is that you take 360 degrees and you divide it by twice the number of sides to get the working angle, which is between common rafter and hip, then the answer would be, and then push tangent, or whatever calculator you use, that would be a 30 degree angle. So 360 divided by 12 is 30. So you don't have to use a tangent function, my bad. Just give you 30 degrees. And you could also just take a protractor, set it to 30 degrees, you know, drop it down on your, your board, draw it on across until it ran into the, your 12 inch mark. And that would be your miter rule. Right here, this is the hypotenuse in plan view. That's where you would set your square tube on the body. And then the common rafter rise on the tongue. You begin to set off a step off your common rafter like that. Starting out like this, spinning it around plate line making the first mark however many stop steps and partial steps are in the common rafter you just match so in this in this case there's three foot the run is three feet seven and a half inches so I've set the steel square on the body to the hypotenuse that I just we just calculated right here and I'm going to do three full steps. One. Two. Three. And then I have a partial step of seven, seven and three quarters of an inch. So how do I find my partial step is the question here, right? So I use this again. I simply measure 73, seven and three quarters along the run of the common, like that. Seven and three quarters. Transfer it to the hypotenuse. Make a mark and measure it. It looks to be eight and 15 sixteenths, almost nine inches. And slide it along from the last Plumb cut, just shy of nine inches. Make a mark out here. And that's the full length of your hexagonal, hexagonal hip, not including deductions at the top and the C cut at the bottom, right? 